My name is Robin Martin. My story is about a home invasion that was led by a so-called friend of 16 years. I met my friend when I was approximately maybe 30 years old. I'm 61 now, but I was around 30 years old. I met her through her sister. Her sister was dating a friend of mine. So that's how we met. And once we met, we just like hit it off. We just like really clicked and just started hanging out and she became my daughter's godmother. We just did a lot of things together. That's how we met. I, know I was really close with her children as she was with mine. We knew each other's families. We, we even figured out down the line that we may even be blood related. It was never confirmed. There were some members of our family that told us that we may even have been blood related, but that was never confirmed. Two years prior, to the incident happening, um, I hadn't heard anything from her. We kind of like got separated. She went, she had a lot of things going on and we just got, we just, I, I stopped hanging at the same places that she was hanging at. I, I forgot exactly how it happened, but we just got separated. So I hadn't actually hadn't seen her in two years when the incident happened. We had meals together with our children. We did a lot of a lot of social stuff together. Like she she did um, a lot of fundraising. She was um, a, a so-called um, evangelist in the church. I got involved with a lot of her church things. My, my, I let my daughter be involved in a lot of it. She was also a hairdresser. So we we were just friends. Like you know we just did we shop together. We just did normal things that friends did. She had a history of violent behaviors. I think a part of the reason why I, I stayed her friends for so long was because I've seen what she had done to other people when they were no longer her friend or if they became an enemy. I've seen what would happen to them and I didn't want that I didn't want that for me. It's embarrassing to say, but I think I remained her friend so long out of fear. So when we when we did stop um, interacting with each other and, and she went her back, it was kind of a relief. I don't want to be specific, but I know I, I know of incidents, violent things that she has done to people that is really bad. So I didn't want that for me. So when we parted, we I, I guess we, we we did part on good terms. There was nothing. There was nothing negative. You know, there was no hard feelings or anything. I just hadn't seen her in a couple years. Not personally to me. It was October six, two thousand and seven. It happened a day after my birthday, which was October fifth, two thousand and seven. So it happened the very next day. So I had a party the night before for my birthday. But I, I really have to back up in order to get to this part. I was living on a certain street and I had a fire, my house burned down. So I had to move to a new location. And when I moved to the new location, I was walking down the street to the store one day and I heard a voice calling out my name, calling my name, hey. So when I looked up, the person that it was, was her dead son's baby's mother, who whom also I was really close to. I was, cause I was close to her children and she was the mother of my friend's son's first child. So I was like really happy to see her, you know, so now we live right across the street from each other. So we start hanging out. She gets to know my children. You know, we, we become friends. This whole time, we never spoke about my friend. We never, even even though um, she had a, a, a grandchild by her, we never spoke about it because I had no idea that there was tension there. I had no idea. So the day after my birthday, me and this said person, the young lady, we were sitting in front of my house, just like, you know, talking about how much fun we had the night before, blah, 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 blah. So all of a sudden, my phone rings and it's my friend who I haven't heard from in two years. So I'm happy. Hey girl, what's up? How you been? You know, blah, 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 blah. So she was like, I've been good. I've been good. Yeah. So, um, so I heard, um, I, I heard you be hanging with, I'm not going to say the name. I heard you be hanging with, you know, the young lady. I said, yeah, she's right here. Thinking that they would want to speak to each other because this is her, this is her, 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 her child's grandmother. The young lady is in the background like, no, 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 no. So now I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I had no idea what was going on. In those two years that had passed by the, where I had no contact with any of them, there had been so much drama surrounding her son's death and her being able to, to visit, to visit the little, the, the, the child with the visitation. Um, there was there was lawyers and courts involved. There had been arrests made. It was a lot of stuff going on that I had no idea about. I learned at that point that she had beef with the young lady. So her next comment to me was, oh, okay, well, since she be hanging at your house, whatever, I'm on my way over there and I'm going to do so and so and so and so and so. Please don't do that. Please do not come to my house with any drama. I got nothing to do with it.
You know, I mean, I'm just here sitting with her. I had no idea that you guys had problems. I said, but it has nothing to do. I, I said, I got my kids here. At this time, my children were teenagers. I said, I don't want all this drama at my house. I said, I would really appreciate it if you would wait and deal with that when you see, nah, nah, forget that, forget that. You mean to tell me you're going to pick her over me? I said, it's not a matter about picking you over her, but I can't allow you to come to my house and cause harm to her. So I would rather you just not even come. She hung up the phone. She came anyway. Mind you, my children aren't small anymore. They're like uh, 16, 17, 19. They're, 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 they're teenage children. So when, when she pulled up in front of my house, she immediately got out of the, out of the car. And I, now mind you, as soon as she pulled up, I dialed 911 because I didn't want any drama. So she got out of her car, she's walking up my driveway and I'm explaining to the police the whole time, okay, she came anyway, she's coming down the driveway. Blah, blah, blah. She came in, she grabbed me around my throat. She tried to attack me, whatever, whatever. Then my kids got involved, which any, any kids would. So they got her off of me, my kids. She tried to mace us. It didn't work. So she finally got back in her car and left. I immediately, when the police got there, I explained to them because I knew her history. I knew it was going to be a problem. So they, they were leaning toward you stay where you live. She stays where she lives and, and we're going to call it that. And I tried to explain to them. It's not going to end it that she's not going to let it go. I said, if y'all don't arrest her right now, there's going to be repercussions. They didn't, they didn't believe me. So that was on, this is on a, um, a Friday. This is on a Friday. Okay, so the police left, she left, everything's cleared up. The next day on Saturday, I started noticing her goons just, you know, pacing up and down the street, just going back and forth up and down the street. I knew, I knew it was, it was coming, I knew it was coming to something. So all day long Saturday, they cased my house all day Saturday. That Sunday, Thank God, my, 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 my son, who was about maybe 18 or 19 then, and my daughter was seven months pregnant, six or seven months pregnant. And they, but they were across the street at the young lady's house who I was, I was speaking about earlier. They were over there chilling, doing what kids do. They were over there chilling. So I'm laying on my couch. While I forgot what I was watching, but I was watching TV. And all of a sudden, I just heard the whole window just shatter. It just shattered. And then um, I looked to my door, which was right to my right. They bust that, that window in, put their arms through, unlocked the door, and they just came up, they came in, about 10 or 12 of them. They had hammers, um, mallets, mace, bats, and they just beat me all over the house. So, so at one point, I just, I just covered myself, you know. I covered myself because I was really afraid for my life. And at this point, I just started saying, Please don't kill me. Just please. Because I knew what she was capable of. I said, please do not kill me. Just let me live. So then I managed to fall to the floor. And that's when they shot me out the window. I'm not sure what they hit me with. But it was it was, it was was hard enough to leave this scar. It's a permit. It's never going to go away. My son, who was right here. My my son, they went through it too. They were, he, he was running towards trying to help me. And they started shooting at him. So I'm I'm just thankful that they didn't use those guns on me because they because they didn't shoot me inside the house. They just beat me. I, I didn't think they had guns. But when they shot at my son, I realized they had guns too. And then one of my neighbors came from across the street and she she was a big girl. She picked me up and she threatened them because they were they were they were still trying to beat me even after I was in her arms. I couldn't see because they had maced me. I mean, I was really, really messed up. And she said, if, if one more y'all touch her, y'all gonna die tonight. That's what she told them. So then she got me over to her house. She took me across the street, called the ambulance and the police and all that stuff came. That's how it ended. It didn't end, it didn't end there, but that's, that's how the beating ended. So by the time I got to the hospital, I had, I had a lacerated liver. I had uh, concussions, uh, major fractures all over my body. I wasn't the first person that she had done this to, but I was the first person that had enough courage to come forth. And I, I just want to say that I came forth and it wasn't just for me because I didn't want this to happen to anyone else. I could not allow her to do this to anyone else. Now, it just so happened that the time this was happening, there was a young man in prison doing a life sentence for a murder that 
she committed. She had several complaints against the police department from the city that I was from, accusing them of um, malpractice, misconduct, because they because she was always in this, she was always in the in, in trouble. So she felt that they were targeting her. She went up under this persona as being a, this a holy person, an evangelist, you know, and all this. So we went to court. I won my case. She was sentenced to. She got three sentences, 16, 16, and seven, but they were ran, we call them when they run them together concurrently. Two years into her sentence, this guy had had enough and he, he came forth and he, you know, he said, I didn't commit this murder. I didn't commit this murder. And he told the whole truth. So now she's doing life without a possibility of parole. It screwed me up so bad to where I have done the 16 years in prison with her. This is the first time that I've ever talked about it out of fear. After she got sentenced, I was relocated to Charlotte, North Carolina by the DA's office because there was threats coming to me from her, from family members where they were gonna, she had a son that was in prison. Um, he was being released, um, I think like eight months to a year. He had put uh, a bounty on my head. Um, he was gonna do this, do that. So I was really afraid. I had never in my life experienced anything like this. So I, I had to uh, uproot my kids, and we had, we moved to where I live now. I didn't know anybody here, but I had to forsake to be safe. I have felt like I have done the 16 years with her because I have no social life. I just recently started going back out to like clubs and stuff and be, being able to be around um, uh, crowds of people. I'm unstable, I'm, a, I'm on medications for anxiety. I stay to myself, I don't have any friends because I don't trust anybody. I don't, I, I don't, I don't trust. I'm afraid because she was my best friend. By the time I made it to the hospital, I had a lacerated liver. My leg, my leg, I had a fractured leg. I had a, um, my spine had a small fracture. Lesions everywhere, like lesions everywhere. A laceration to my skull as well. I stayed in the hospital for seven days. I just had to heal. I'm a, I'm a tough cookie. That wasn't my first time being attacked. Unfortunately, I, I had a, I, I was, um, I was robbed, mugged in 1994, which left me with um, a broken nose. I don't, I don't have any jaw bones. I have screws holding my jaws together. To see the scars on my nose. My nose was broken four places, but that was from another incident that happened in 1994, just a random robbery. It happened in 07, and this is 2023, and I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about it. Um, I will never ever forget it not one moment of it. My story has not changed from day one to now because it happened. I couldn't believe that it had happened. I knew something something was gonna happen, but I didn't I didn't think it would be that tragic. I thought that she might just come back the next day to fight again or something like that or bring a gang over to my house or even shoot it up. I've seen her done that before. So when I went to court, um, she maintained her in in innocence. She even had witnesses and um, I maintained her guilt. So I showed up for every court case with my attorney. As a matter of fact, I had a public defender. That's how that that's how bad the um, the police department where I li where I'm from wanted her. They wanted her bad because she had committed so many crimes that they couldn't pin her to. So they wanted her anyways. I just I just maintained my story from from day one. You know, I I just told the truth. And I and I, I was not afraid. I did not let I did not her, let her scare me. The day of the first court date, the first day, big rocks came through my front window at my new address because I had to leave. We had to move from that address after that. We had got a new address. Somebody shot rocks through our window, and we had a we had a, a police escort to and from court every day. That's how serious it was. And but I didn't let that scare me. I still went to court. I went to court every day, and I just told myself I just told the truth. So her sentence was 16 years, 16 years and seven years. Well, two years into her sentence, she was also convicted of a murder that she was found guilty of a murder that she had committed that someone else was doing time for. And she's now serving a life sentence for that. She was, she was also convicted of another crime and she's, and she's now serving life for that crime. I have not been able to work since. I have not had a regular job since the incident. My mental state is, I live in fear as far as um, trying to make, make friends and letting people other than family close to me. It's like impossible to get close to me because I don't, I just don't trust. My, 
My trust is at a, a zero. My children and my grandchildren are my whole life. My children and my grandchildren are my whole life. I, I, I revolve around them 24 seven. Everything I do in life revolves around my children and my grandchildren because that's my safe haven. That's the only place I feel safe. I'm 61 years old now. I have a lovely home. 10 beautiful grandchildren. Um, all of my children are adults and they are successful. I live, I'm happy. And I haven't had any other tragedies happen to me since I moved here to where I am now. I'm just taking it one day at a time. If I could say anything to anyone that this has happened to, what I'm doing right now, it's a happy, what, I'm, what I mean by that is it's a healing. It's, it's, it's a healer. To be able to talk about it, you know, it. I just, I feel like I lifted a whole weight off my shoulders. Like, I just, I, yeah, it, it feels really, really good. A lot of people that know me where I live right now don't even know that this has happened to me. So they'll, they'll know now, but they, they didn't even know this about me. I've been judged. Um, and I can say that I do act kind of weird around people. I don't act normal. I act, I act kind of distant and I act kind of sheltered. And people don't understand why. So maybe now if they see my story, they'll understand why I'm so standoffish and so private and so secluded and stay to myself. Maybe they'll understand why now. Not It's, it's really okay not to trust. It really is okay. Especially if you've been through something that like, like I've been through. And if you decide you want to work on your trust issues, by all means do so. But at the end of the day, and I'm not going to say I don't trust because I do trust to a certain extent. So maybe I, I need to rephrase that because I don't not 100% trust. Um, I just, I just think twice before I call somebody my best friend. I, I don't, I don't use that word so loosely anymore. I'd rather say, um, I know this person, we're associates, we're okay, but you, you have to be careful who you call a friend. That's my message. No matter what party I go to, girl, I'm the life of the party. I'm always the life of the party, but I'm that person in the party that everybody wants my, everybody just falls in love with me. They want my phone number. They want to hang out with me. So I don't, I don't give them my phone number, but I take theirs, but I never call. I've met so many people that were like, I felt that they were, oh yeah, I like her. They cool. I, I, could, I could chill with them. But am I going to let them in? No. I never called them again. If I happen to see them in the streets, whatever, girl, why you ain't calling me? Girl, I lost your number. So that's, that's, that's where it is for me. I trust you as far as I can see you. So if we're in a club and we're in a party together, we're having fun, I trust you right now. But at the lead of that party, it's you go your way, I go mine, and that's it. And believe me, I've tried. I've tried to have friends since then. I'm, I'm I'm a giver. So I find that the people that I I try to be friends with, they're not being my friend because they, they want to be my friend. They're being my friend because of what I have to offer. Okay, well, just to give you an example, um, I have I have 10 grandchildren and one of my grandchildren still live where I'm from. So he's here visiting me right now. We went to Chuck E. Cheese on Monday. Um, they wanted a seafood boil. I made him a seafood. I spent all my time with my kids. Me and my daughters, we hung out all day yesterday. We went out to eat. And then we went to my son's house, hung out with him for a little while. You know, I just spent all my time. We do our holidays. We had Thanksgiving together. Um, we'll do Christmas at one of my daughter's houses. So there's enough of us to where, and we just stayed ourselves. And because of that incident, my, my daughters don't do the best, the best friend thing either. We just don't like my son. We don't, he don't hang with no guys. Like he ain't got no buddies. We just don't, we, we're our best friends. We just stayed ourselves. My children and my grandchildren are everything to me. They're everything. They're the air I breathe. A large goal, a big goal of mine is to get my story on paper. I want to, I would like to write a book. It's a dream of mine. And I would like to do this in the next six months to a year, at least get started on it. I'm, I don't even know the process of writing a book or how long it takes. I don't know anything, but I just know that I want to write a book about my life. And I think it's going to be a bestseller.